Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's stretch class. Let's go ahead and get your stick. We're gonna go with just one stick today. Um, and let's go ahead and plant it uh, right at our belly button, out in front, and we'll grasp it again in front of our bodies. And just as a reminder, we typically like to do this in stocking feet or bare feet as we're able, as we're comfortable. So if you would like to take a moment to take off your shoes and then plant the stick right in front of your belly button, grasping it about shoulder height with two hands, okay? Now, whenever we use the stick here, we aren't leaning into the stick, we aren't using it for support, rather we're using it as a reminder to help us engage through our core, okay? So with our feet in parallel, right? Underneath our hips, we're gonna begin by just warming up our feet and our ankles. So we're gonna slowly start peeling our left foot up off the ground coming all the way up onto the ball of our foot and slowly articulating down. So we're working through all the bones of the foot, all the muscles in the foot as high up onto the balls of your feet as you can and slowly work their way down. And you are putting a little bit of energy into the stick, just five to 10%. Okay, after we do six or seven repetitions on that side, let's go ahead and switch to the other side peeling the foot all the way up. And we tend to, you know, I talk about the foot, the foot, the foot, but the muscle in the back of the leg that's working, you know, you should feel warming up as well in the calf. And you notice my shoulders are staying level, that increase, that raising of the foot, it's taking into flexion as my knee is going forward. A lot of times we don't like knee flexion, especially when we have weight, we oftentimes most times try and avoid it, but here we're going to allow it and we don't have a lot of pressure into it. Okay, nice. All right, now let's go back to our original foot and we'll start working in circles with that foot into the mat. So pinky toe to big toe, inner edge to heel, outer edge to pinky. Nice and slowly working through the range of motion in the foot. Okay, change directions. All right, nicely done. Okay, let's switch to the other foot, the right foot. Good. Big toe to pinky, outer edge to heel, inner edge to big toe and change directions. All right, nicely done. Okay, you should start to feel some tension, not tension, but a little bit of fatigue in the foot so you can shake them out just a little bit and we are not done. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and spread our feet just a tiny bit wider. All right, and we're gonna bring that right foot up all the way. And then as the, I'm sorry, the left foot up, and as the left foot descends, the right foot's gonna raise. So we're gonna work in opposition to each other, raising and lowering, shoulders staying level, hips staying level, and still trying to get that heel up as high as we can. Good, get all those cracks out. Being mindful of good balance. Excellent. Okay, now let's bring our feet together. All right, we can take our stick and we can hold it with palms up, almost like it's a, uh, oh, we were tightrope walkers. All right, and so now we're going to keep our feet together and we're gonna walk to the side. Okay, so we're trying to work through um, some coordination here. We've warmed up our ankles, we've warmed up our calves. So now we're going heel, toe, heel, toe. Just a little twist. And as we go, can we go even higher onto the balls of our feet, pressing up and down so we're not staying level. Pushing our body weight through the balls of our feet, using those calf muscles. Good, I'm gonna come back one more time to the center. All right, nicely done. 
Okay, get the, these calves getting a good workout. All right, now the last element here, we're gonna start warming up our inner thighs. Okay, so our feet are closely held, almost legs kissing together, and I never cue that, but we're gonna start here. And now we're gonna turn toes out and then heels out, toes out and heels out. Now, as we do that movement, toes out and heels out, what we're really doing is rotating that leg all the way up into the hip joint. Okay, so now I'm in a nice semi-split here. Not too deep yet, because I'm not that warm. So to initiate drawing my feet back together, I'm thinking inner thigh energy. I'm gripping through the ground, squeezing my inner thighs and drawing my toes in first and then heels. And continue. And that's the first big work for those inner thighs. Okay, let's go again. Out. Good, and maybe you can go a little deeper, maybe not, okay? But find that position where you're still comfortable enough that you're able to maintain your good posture. Squeeze the inner thighs together like you're dragging the floor together and then pull toes, heels, toes, heels. Good, one more time. All right, walk your way out, staying in balance. So the stick here is a nice visual balance and control all right and squeeze to draw back in toe heel toe heel okay excellent job so i'm just marching it out now got some good blood flow and action into my inner thighs getting myself comfortable for my next work okay all right now last week we did a lot of things with two sticks today we're going to do some of those things and try and focus on just one stick but in a way that it is, we're still working on our balance, okay? So we had two sticks, it was fully supported. Now we're gonna use one stick and we're gonna focus on balance, but you need to be mindful of what techniques do I have in my toolkit to help remind me about good balance, using my good breath, picking a focal point, right? Make, taking my gaze to a certain spot, breathing through a position and then imagining how big our feet are planted into the ground. Okay, so I have the stick in my right hand. I'm putting a fair degree of energy into the stick to help activate through my core. And the base of the stick is then a little bit closer to my foot. And then the head of the stick is extended the length of my arm. Okay, so that's on my right side. So from my left side, I'm just gonna work on lifting that left leg straight up. As I exhale, the knees rising and descending. And as I do that, I can extend my palm out on that hand so I can get a sense for how high that knee is. What you should also be focusing on is where your center of gravity is going. It's going over that standing leg. So focus on squeezing through that glute that's supporting you. Two and one. Nicely done. Okay, now let's take this stick out to the side. Hand on hip. And we're gonna move that leg laterally, okay? I like my hand on my hip here because it helps remind me of my oblique and the energy that oblique is gonna to bring to help elevate that leg, okay? Again, standing on the right leg, exhale, leg flows out to the side and back down with control. Good. So the stick's in my right and my left leg is coming out and I'm balancing over my right leg. Now our goal would be center of gravity over that right leg and spine remains at a nice neutral, contracting through your oblique and your glute. Using your exhale, picking your focal point. Good. Two and one. Nicely done. Okay, let's take this stick to the other side. Out in front, face in, head away, arm extended. All right, so now we're gonna stand on the left, raise the knee up, the right knee up. Okay, ready? Exhale and float. Exhale and float. Okay, we wanna do this enough times that we start feeling like it's a little bit of work, right? We don't wanna feel our form break down. We don't wanna impact our spine, we don't wanna feel it in our lower back. We don't wanna feel like we're falling over in any direction, but we wanna feel like, oh, I can feel my left glute working now. 
and I can feel the energy my core is bringing. Okay, maybe one more. You're looking great. Okay. All right, now stick out to the left in our left hand at a nice angle. Now we're gonna work laterally, okay? So my right hand on my right oblique, right glute, exhale. All right, good, using your breath, finding slowness in your movement. That also will help with your balance. Exhale, and down. Good, exhale. One more. Excellent, okay. Whew, our glutes are fired up. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> okay, it's excellent. Excellent work, okay. Now let's start stretching. Now we've got some good blood flow. Let's take the uh, stick out in front of our hips, lengthen your grip really as wide as you can in this first one. And we have to go into this being mindful of staying soft through the chest. So draw the belly button in. Inhale, and as you exhale, raise the stick up. As it slowly descends past your head, think soft through the chest. Now the goal would be we get it all the way behind our hips. But that's not required. Okay, we'll take one more. Good, okay. Now let's go ahead and do some boats. Boats are a really nice way to not only open up the side of your body, but also the shoulder. So bring the palm, your right palm to the end of your stick and we'll keep the stick out in front. All right, so what we're gonna do is maintaining a neutral spine, stretch that arm so your bicep meets your ear, Lengthen through your rib cage. So my right hand is going to the ceiling. Okay, I'm rocking and right hand to the ceiling. Right hand is at the end of the stick. That's okay. There you go. That's it, Anne. So you should feel the stretch through your armpits, through your chest through your rib cage. Good, take one more. And try and stay soft as you stretch. Don't clench, don't grip. Okay, now I'm changing to do the other side. So left palm is at the end of the stick and it's my left hand that's gonna extend toward the ceiling, stretching toward the ceiling. Biceps, armpit, rib cage. You might feel it down through your oblique a little. Good. One more. Excellent. Okay. Now we're gonna work on to the front. Okay, so that was side to side or lateral work. Now we're gonna work through the frontal plane. So it's almost as though we're uh, working in our gardens and we wanna um, shovel some dirt. So our stick is now our shovel. And we'll place our right palm over the head of the stick. And that's the base of the shovel. And we're gonna scoop the dirt and send it right over our shoulder. So we're working in an arc. Up and over the shoulder. Okay, so it should be over the right shoulder. So other side, Anne. So if you're going left, then go over your left shoulder. There you go, good. And think about that hand is reaching straight back to the wall behind you. So we're trying to open the chest. There you go, in that arc. Excellent. Last one, and then we'll switch to the other side. Okay, good. All right, left hand on top. All right, it's coming back across the right hip and arcing up and over the left shoulder. Good, and scoop and over. Left hand, so Anne, you are up, you're working opposite right now. So go ahead and put your right hand on the end of the stick and over your right shoulder, there you go.
keeping that arm as straight as you can as it works back behind you. Good, okay. All right, now let's place the stick behind our hips. All right, we'll take a tiny little rotation here. Exhaling as you go, relax through the neck. Spinal twist. This is our first twist of the day. Just be gentle with yourself. Good, okay, return to center and then we'll hinge. Melting belly button through sternum toward the mat. First hinge of the day and rise. Draw in your breath and then exhale as you hinge again, melting belly button through sternum down. Feeling that initial release, press your heels through the ground, contract hamstrings and glutes to rise and descend. After four or five of these, you should start feeling the loosening of those muscles, the blood flow. Maybe you're getting a little bit deeper such that you can get your shoulders parallel to your hips. That's your ideal. Good, and one more. Excellent. Okay, let's quickly change our grip so that our knuckles are facing out. And we'll hinge forward. And as we hinge, that stick is going to slide down the backside of our legs. All right, and we're going to hinge forward until our shoulders are we're as deep as we can go. And then we'll exhale and start lifting the bar up over our fanny. And then as it rides up our back, our gaze and head fall. So we're gazing between our knees and our head is relaxed and heavy and the stick and our arms are back as far as they can go. Good and relax. Now this position can be kind of intense as far as blood flow into the head, so we won't hold it too long. Go ahead and start bringing it back behind your fanny all the way to your ankles and then rise and we'll give yourselves ourselves a little bit of chance to recover <laughs> we'll take one more so let the blood descend back down out of our head and we'll take one more of those okay all right so start hinging on soft knees stick begins riding down the back of your legs all the way to your ankles and then exhale as you start lifting the stick up and over your fanny, in your back, and your head falls heavy and you gaze between your knees. And you relax through your neck and shoulders as your hands are rotated back as far as they can go. Good, okay, and before it gets too much in your head, return the stick back to your ankles and then hinge and rise up. Excellent. All right, now from here, let's go ahead and place the stick in our elbows. We haven't done this work in a while. All right, so it's behind our back, right below our scapula in the crease of our elbows, and our arms are at a right angle. So I often like to just have my palms up here as though I'm holding onto something, okay? But what I'm working through now is I'm trying to work on a little bit of release in my shoulder blades. So my feet aren't gonna be doing any work here. The stick is going in an up and down fashion. Okay, and certainly some of this work is being done in the hinging of my arms, but I wanna keep my elbows in as much as I can. And I wanna find release in the muscles in my shoulder blades. So imagining that I'm pedaling with my shoulder blades. My shoulder blades are staying down and I can feel my shoulder blades rising up and down, up and down, obviously in opposition to each other, up and down. Good. Good. 
good. Okay. You want to do this long enough until you feel you're starting to not master it, but you're getting the hang of the movement that you should be feeling and you're visualizing your shoulder blades. One is rising while the other is falling. The next element is to start working your stick in tiny little circles. Okay, focusing on that stillness and you're still pedaling through your mid back with your shoulder blades. So pick small circles. Good, okay. Once you feel like you're creating movement in your shoulder blades, now change directions. You will find one direction is easier than the others, okay? Pay attention to how much your shoulders are rising up and down. You don't wanna feel like you're shrugging big time in your shoulders. Small movements. Nicely done. Tiny relaxed movements. Okay, go ahead and release. Let's go ahead and bring that stick out for just a moment. And now you can go ahead and work through some shoulder circles, big shrugs in one direction and then big shrugs in the alternate direction. Okay, so I was fiddling around with a client yesterday on some stretching. And I did a stretch that I hadn't done in a while. Um, and it was actually really interesting because I found my way to windmill from this stretch. Who knew? Okay, um, so let's try this stretch. So the, the issue that this stretch sometimes uh, reveals is if you have um, pain in your shoulders, okay? So it might not be great. That's kind of what moved me away from it. But if you're pain-free in your shoulders, it might be, it certainly is a really nice stretch. Um, and uh, so let's go over it just a little bit. So my feet are planted into the mat at my normal athletic stance. And my stick is right in front of my belly button. I'm gonna grasp the stick at the highest point. Okay, and so I'm gonna go into this hinge, but what's gonna happen is I've got this nice little triangle shape between my arms, right? And I'm gonna hinge forward and I'm gonna let my face fall through between my arms, okay? And so I want to relax through my armpits and allow that big stretch through my chest and armpits. And I often find that if you have one shoulder that hurts, play around with which hand is on top, all right? You might feel that you can engage in the stretch by alternating which hand is on top of the grip. Okay, so right now I'm trying to let my head and my torso be heavy as I hang here and I feel this stretch in my deltoids, the tops of shoulders, in my underarms, and it's escaping down my, sh um, my rib cage as well. All right, so from here now, I'm going to slowly start walking down the stick with my grip. Okay, so I've got a nice strong grip. And I'm not bending my knees anymore. Here's where I'm going into my hinge. Okay. And I'm going to walk all the way down as far as my hinge will allow. So my shoulders are below my hips. My hands are down deeply into the stick. And if my arms are bent, I'm going to stretch my arms to straighten and press the stick away. And this takes some of the stretch out of, you know, that tension hanging your body weight into your shoulders, but it allows you to stretch more deeply in the backs of your arms and up your armpits. And in your rib cage. Now, how do we get to windmill from here? I'm sure you all see it, right? So I've got my left hand on bottom. I'm just gonna adjust my grip and I'm gonna lengthen my right arm on top. All right, and now I'm gonna look to the right and here I am in my windmill. Okay, so I'm melting my torso into the stick. My hands are straight up and down, which is the goal. The stick is at my chest. Okay, so I'll revisit that. Okay, let's revisit it. So we're down at the bottom of this stretch, right? Here, and my left hand is on bottom. 
with thumb up. I'm just gonna rotate my hands, my thumb is on the bottom. Good. Okay, and now I'm gonna lengthen my right arm on top. I'm gonna melt my chest forward into the stick as much as I am able. There you go, good. And I'm getting a little bit of rotation and now I can feel it on my right side all the way to my hip. Okay, and when I wanna come out of that, I rock back onto my heels and come back to standing. So in some ways that is a little bit easier to access because you're not pegging all of your body weight onto your top hand of your stick, right? You kind of have supported your body in your hinge. And then you're just reaching for the ceiling with that top hand, okay? So um, let's try that again. This time we'll make sure to have right hand on bottom, okay? And then we'll extend the left hand up. And our goal would be that our stick is straight, right? And so we get, can maximize the rotation. All right, so here I am in my stick and I'm hinging as my hands are sliding or walking down the stick, my right hand's on bottom. Okay, now once I reach my stopping point, my, I'm gonna release my right hand on bottom and I'm gonna flip it. So rotate palm up and then palm out. There you go, Kathy, okay? And then slide the left arm up. And then melt your chest forward into the stick. Good, there you go, Anne, that's good. Okay, so now you should feel it up your left side or whatever hand is at the top of the stick. And coming out of that, you rock to your heels, bend your knees just a little bit. Okay. Different. It might not work for everybody. And whenever we try something new, I always encourage you to let's practice it a little bit, unless it's horrible and painful, then obviously we aren't going to practice it a little bit. But with a little bit of practice, then you kind of like, oh, now I know where I'm supposed to feel it. Now I can focus on it. So we'll try that a couple more times, not today, but we'll continue to try that as a different way to access windmill um, to see if you can get into it more comfortably than coming top side with a strong grip and to see if you can get more benefit out of the stretch. Okay, excellent. All right, now we're gonna come down onto one knee. Uh, so get a uh, blanket or a pillow if you need to. And we're just gonna, we're gonna work on stretching out our inner thighs, okay? All right, so for right now, I'm in a half kneel and my left knee is up and I have the stick in my right hand. And we're gonna go ahead and, do you want me to get you a blanket, Kathy? Okay. So we're gonna start with stretching out our hip flexors first, and then we're gonna to go to our adductors. So we're gonna use our stick just as a reminder for us to stay nice and tall. And we're gonna start sliding forward. And my left, or I'm sorry, my right knee is down. And so I'm imagining that I'm leaving that right leg behind as I open up the hip flexors in that right side. And to some degree, that quad muscle on the right side. Excellent. And that left knee should be going straight forward. So if you look down at your knee, what is the path that it is traveling? It should be tracking right in line with your big toe, moving forward. It shouldn't be veering to the left or to the right. Good, okay, now we're gonna resume our half kneel. Now, let's take that left knee and bring it, swing it out as widely as you can, not as widely as I can, as widely as you can. Okay, and now we're gonna stay with that same sliding forward, but we're stretching through that inner thigh just a little bit. So this is my left leg, and I'm gonna place my left hand up on that knee, just applying gentle pressure. As a reminder, I'm trying to open up the hip and stretch through that inner thigh. Doesn't have to be a lot of pressure. Doesn't have to be any if you prefer not to do it.
good. Now let's look back at the stick in our right hand. Let's go ahead and set it at an angle, okay? So it's angling the base of it toward your left heel, okay? So as you go down into it, you should feel a stretch through your chest on that right side, okay? So you come up. You might have to play around with where exactly the stick is planted into the ground. Good, yep, you can monkey hang from it a little bit, that's good. Okay, the other thing that we can do is we can change the angle. So we can change it so the head of the stick runs the same direction as your knee. All right, and as you go down into it, so this is how it looks, right? And then with that right hand, I'm gonna bring it down to my side and I'm gonna press through the stick and it's gonna help you activate down your right lateral line. So right lat, oblique, and glute, okay? Grasping and pushing down. Good. Good, take one more. Excellent, okay, so you're probably feeling some fatigue in this left leg now. Okay, let's go ahead and switch. Okay, right leg up, into your half kneel. Stick is in my left hand now. Okay, and I'm gonna focus on lengthening through that left hip flexors, left quad, right knee tracking straight forward. Good. Inhaling and exhaling. Good, take one more, and then we'll swing that gate open as wide as you can comfortably. The goal, if you were 100% operational, would be a 90 degree angle, right? So if this leg were out, and this could go 90 degrees, but I mean, that's not always achievable, okay? So right now the stick is in the ground, not doing anything in particular, and we're focusing on just starting to open up through that right inner thigh. You can have your hand resting on your knee. It can be active, pushing you open just a little bit more as you like. Good, okay, now take this stick and put the plant the base of the stick in closer to your right heel and grasp the stick and let's open a little bit through the chest on the left side. And you can play around with the angle. It can be a long and open, it can be a high monkey hang. That's what we call that when um, we hang our body weight in our half kneel onto our stick, that's a monkey hang. You can imagine a monkey hanging from a tree. That's where the name derives. Okay, now we can change the stick and change it from a stretching to a strengthening move. So now the head of the stick is going the same direction as that knee. The hand, right hand is up and the left hand is gonna go down from lat to oblique to hip and you're gonna press through the stick as you go, firing through lat to oblique to glute. Good. Good, let's take one more. Lat, oblique, glute, and right inner thigh. All right, nice, okay. Let's go ahead and bring that stick out of our way and we'll go into our first child's pose. So let's go ahead and get on our knees. 
right here and on our hands in tabletop and allow your hips to settle back down towards your heels. You can have knees narrow or knees wide, whichever you choose and allow yourself to begin melting your torso toward the mat. Evaluating the areas in your body where you're feeling tense. And hopefully we can let that tension go. Good. Now draw your hands under your armpits, pressing your torso up. Return yourself back to tabletop, planting your hands underneath your armpits and your knees under your hips. And now let's begin sliding our right knee up toward our right hand and sliding your left leg back as far as you can, ideally so it's straight. And then we're gonna slowly walk our right foot up, up, up toward our left hand. Now again, there's an ideal there so that your foot is parallel to your knee, but that is sometimes the ideal is not achievable. So get it into a position that you can deal with, okay? And then we'll start lowering our torso onto our elbows, okay? And you should be feeling this right away in this right hip. Okay, and so we want to spend a little few moments here allowing yourself to relax and calm down into this positioning, maybe letting go of the tension you're carrying in your left leg and that quad. And as the edge starts easing, then allow yourself as you're able to melt your chest down onto that right thigh and melting your head onto your mat. So your arms are extended up overhead. And we'll spend three deep inhales and exhales in this position. and being mindful to come out of it without tension, just slowly starts dragging your hands underneath your armpits, one at a time if you need to, keeping your legs dead and using the palms of your hands to press your torso up and away until your arms are straight. And now you can begin slowly dragging that right leg out and left leg back so you've returned yourself to tabletop. And now let's go the other way. So left leg is gonna slide forward toward left hand. Right leg's gonna slide back. Okay, good. And I've got my shoulders stacked over my wrists and now I'm gonna sneak that left foot up toward my right hand as I'm able. Okay, now I found it into a position that I can tolerate with my knee, with my hip, whatever your limitations might be. And then slowly lower your torso onto your elbows. Okay, and then start rationalizing why you're working on this leg, because it's good for me, even though it hurts, I'm gonna do this. Just kidding, it feels fine. Okay, release the tension in your right leg. Relax your knee into the mat. Let go, and then slowly start sliding your arms out. Let your chest fall to your knee, let your head relax into the mat as your arms are stretched out overhead. And if you recall, we're gonna spend three good inhales and exhales here on this side. And coming out of the stretch with no tension, draw your arms 
back to your armpits, plant your hands, slowly press your torso up and away until your arms are straight, and then drag the left knee back. So it's under the hip. All right, now we could take another child's pose here if you need it, but otherwise we're gonna end our, we're gonna flip around and get on our backs from here, okay? And so before you do that, find your hand strap, which I failed to grab. So I'm gonna go get a hand strap and we'll start stretching out our hamstrings. Okay. All right, so I have my yoga strap and I'm laying on my back, trying to find my neutral in my spine before I begin. Just relaxing into my base, and my imprint. I'm gonna take the strap and wrap it around my right foot. All right. Now you can either let the other leg be bent with foot into the ground, or you can extend it, whichever is your preference is fine. All right, but we want to start with as straight a leg for that right leg as we can, the one that's in the strap. All right, so make that leg dead and heavy. All right, your elbows are into your ribs, you grasp the strap in your hands and slowly start contracting through the biceps to raise the leg up the ceiling or up the sky if you're outside. And we wanna keep our hips anchored and we want to breathe through the stretch, okay? Keep that foot straight. So we're trying to access the primary hamstring muscles in the back of the legs. If we twist the foot, it's not terrible, it's just gonna change the direction of the stretch and perhaps the muscle group that we're accessing. So the foot is straight for now. And I'm relaxed and I'm breathing. I've picked a focal point on my ceiling. And I've got consistent tension. I'm not jerking. That's why it's good to keep your elbows locked into your ribs, supported by your lats, so you can control the amount of tension in a very even way. And now we'll release a little bit on that foot. So let it drop just a bit and then we'll rotate. So we'll turn, our foot is no longer straight. Now our toes are gonna point off to the left. Okay, and so we've rotated in the hip joint, but we're keeping the hips on the ground. And I've transitioned the, the yoga straps into my left hand. And now I'm pulling, my right hip needs to stay down, but I'm pulling away from my right shoulder, pulling more toward my left shoulder. And you will feel this more in your outer hamstring. And you may need to you know, give yourself a little poke in your quad there so you're not actively uh, gripping through your right quad. Good, and then soften the knee. And we'll go ahead and switch legs. Sometimes I have clients tell me that that stretch as we move to the outer hamstrings. Um, they get tingling in their foot or their foot falls asleep. And about at that point is a good time to get yourself out of that stretch. Okay, so I've switched to the left foot. I found a position where it's dead and heavy and straight before I begin contracting and raising it up. And exhale as you lengthen. Okay, check in, making sure you're not gripping in that quad.
Think soft length and not grip. Maybe with your eyes closed. Now release a little bit of tension in the straps so that you can rotate the leg to the right. So the heel raises to the left of the, as the toes descend to the right. And transition the straps to your right hand, elbow in. And now start contracting and pulling your left big toe towards your right shoulder, keeping the left side of the pelvis anchored down. And breathe. This is more challenging the outer hamstring. So you, if you aren't already focused on relaxing and breathing, please do so now. Maybe you didn't need to before, but now you might need to. Good. Okay, now keeping the strap behind that left foot, we'll go ahead and lower it a little bit and we're gonna sneak that right leg in, in a figure four. So right ankle is gonna stack on the left knee. And allow the left knee to bend and you have your hand straps now on top. So they're not threading between your legs but um, framing your left knee. Right elbow might be pressing gently into the meaty part of the right leg in your figure four. And now elbows in and we'll start doing that little bicep curl to contract and draw the left knee in closer to your torso as the right knee moves away. And that's where you'll feel the stretch in your right butt into that piriformis. Exhale, exhale, out, exhale. Good. Now release the straps a bit and we'll switch legs. So I've now planted my right foot into the strap. I'm going to sneak my left leg in. So my left ankle is on my right knee. Allow my right knee to bend. Left elbow into the meaty part of the left knee and bend. Okay. So that was right leg is bending. So I don't, I'm not carrying tension into my right leg. I'm just going to contract through my biceps and draw that right leg in, that right knee in, is my left elbow presses my left knee away. Now it's hard not to add a bunch of tension in your neck here, so be conscious of relaxing through your neck. Open. Good. Now slowly release the yoga straps. And you can draw your knees in towards your chest. And your arms are going to go down to the ground. And I'm going to start with my uh, left side. So I'm going to let my knees fall to the left side of my body with control. Okay. And I'm bringing them. Ideally, all the way down to the ground, and my right shoulder blade is down. And I'm going to tee out my arms. And hopefully, I'm getting a nice rotational stretch on the right side here. Maybe a little stretch in my chest as my arms are teed out. If my legs are going to the left, I take my gaze to the right. Now, to get more out of this stretch, I might straighten just a little bit, drawing my left knee down and drawing my right knee a little bit higher. So the right knee is no longer supported, that right leg, by the left. Okay, so it has farther to go to reach the ground. So now my left hand sits on top of right knee, adds a gentle pressure, more rotation. 
And if arm teed out isn't enough, you can start sliding that right arm up even higher to get more of a stretch through the chest. Good. Okay, now we're gonna roll back to the middle. So as you're able, find your center and draw your knees to your chest. And now we're going to let them fall gently to the right. And allow them to land all the way to the ground. Open up your chest to the ceiling, allowing that left shoulder blade to land on the ground. Arm teed out, palm up. Pausing here for a moment or the entire time, but it's nice to start here. And then as you want to go more deeply, then you can slide that bottom leg out. In the right hand and the left knee, now presses down a little bit on that left knee to get more rotation. And then the left arm can slide up a bit. All right, excellent, okay. Draw your arms back to your side. Curl your knees back to your chest. Good, now you can extend yourself out on your mats. Legs extended on your, laying on your back. Arms to the ground, palms up. Take a nice breath or two. And then roll over onto your side as you're ready to get up and press your torso up off the mat. Now feel free to stay in that position as long as you want. We're at the end of class, but there's no rushing you off. Um, have a good Sunday, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.